All right, Shalom. As always, before I begin, I'd like to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Hakodash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who you see in front of you, who the world calls God. Bahashem means in the name, and Yahweh Shai is the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, who you see in front of you, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Okay, and what you just heard, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh means He delivers. Osalakia. Yahweh means the existing one. He exists. Bahashem means in the name. And Yahweh Shai is, or the definition of the word is the deliverer. Okay? He delivers. Okay? Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful elect that have been scattered abroad the four winds of the earth, okay? And as you can see, the title of this lesson is Work Out Your Own Salvation with Fear and Trembling, okay? And pretty much the inspiration of this video came to mind as it was going over a couple notes, um, mainly in the book of Ezekiel. And I was going through the 14th chapter where it speaks about how... Um, Matter of fact, we'll get to it, but ba uh, basically, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of this truth, us brethren are really working out our own salvation, okay? Just because, you know, we're doing everything right, we're, we have faith, we're doing the work to the best of our ability, we're keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, this, that, the third... That doesn't mean that our whole family is going to be saved, okay? Now, granted, there's going to be some brethren whose families are going to be saved, okay? Because that's according to the prophecy in the book of Zechariah, the, uh, the 13th chapter, starting at the 8th verse, okay? Some, uh, some women, children, and men are going to be saved, okay? The one-third of the nation of Israel. But the majority of our, uh, of our families aren't going to make it, okay? Because they've been exceedingly polluted with wickedness, alright? So really, us brethren doing these shows, doing, you know, getting right with our power, it's all to work out our own salvation, okay? So that's what I'm going to touch up on this video. Lord's will, it's edifying to whoever may be watching. And without further ado, we're going to jump uh, right into the scriptures, okay? So I wanted to first grab Philippians 2 and 12, but... I'm going to jump in the book of Ezekiel. We're going to be in the uh, the book of Ezekiel a lot because, you know, there's a lot of heavy points in this book. Okay, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, starting at the ninth verse, okay? Because the majority of this Bible, the book that the Heavenly Father has given us, is basically a book full of mournings and suffering, Okay? So this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 9. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe, okay? And pretty much that's what the entire, um, that's what the scriptures are revolved around, okay? Although you have some sweet parts of this book, the kingdom of heaven, understanding that you're the most high's uh, chosen people. The majority of it is destruction, okay? Destruction, um, mourning, because at the end of the day, this whole planet Earth that we're living in right now is wicked, okay? And the only way it's going to go back to its rightful course is... Matter of fact, let me get that. I believe it's in 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter. In the 19th verse, I believe. Um, matter of fact, I'll start at 17, okay? Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days, okay? And as this brother know, Ezra was given the visions of what was to come, okay? And when he saw them... He was pretty much saying, you know, destroy me, destruction upon me, okay? Because those days are very, hey amen, they're horrifying, okay? 
Words can't explain what's about to take place in the world very soon, all right? But at the end of the day, all that, all this destruction, all this pestilence, all these different plagues that the Heavenly Father is about to bring, it's all for the benefit of the world, okay? Verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear the beginning of evils what shall i do when these evils shall come and this is the point verse 19 behold famine and plague tribulation and anguish anguish are sent as scourges for amendment okay so all these all this sorrow the famine the nuclear missiles all this is set for an amendment okay and if you brethren don't know what that word means, uh, we'll get it real quick. All right. Boom, right there. Betterment, improvement, correction, reformation. Um, this definition's fire. It says, damn, so lucky. To remove its faults, okay? And that's basically what all these different um catastrophes that the heavenly father is about to bring are that's what their duty is okay to rebuke the other nations and to put back the fear of yahweh wa yahweh shai upon the whole world okay because right now that the world is lacking that okay but like the scripture says the in the book of uh second Ezra, the ninth chapter uh the 11th or 12th verse Everyone is going to know that Yahweh wa Yahweh Shai is the creator of the heavens and, and the earth through death by pain, okay? So that's a, hey man, that's a very bitter pill to swallow, okay? And the majority of our families, our family members, they, they aren't going to receive this word, okay? They're not going to reprove themselves and get back with their power, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's all according to the prophecy of the Heavenly Father. Uh, like I said earlier, pursuing to the book of, uh, not uh, Sirach, Zechariah uh, 19, Salaki, not 19, Zechariah 13. Matter of fact, we'll get that. Salaki. Zechariah 13. I'll start at seven. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep. Sh <clears throat> Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Most High, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Okay? And the two third. Is speaking about the two third of the nation of Israel, okay? Because man, it's lucky. I'm gonna turn on my car. It's kind of hot. Um, the two third of our nation, hey man, we've come down to a very low estate, okay? The scriptures say that we've become even more wicked than Sodom and Gomorrah, all right? And we knew what went down with those people, all right? But we've, man, we've gone down to a very low estate, all right? That's why the two-third of our people have to be cut off and have to be reproved so that they can understand that the Heavenly Father, their power, is, you know, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he is meant to be feared, okay? And that message is going to be brought throughout the four winds of the earth, all right, very soon. So from there, um, yeah, let's go to Philippians now. 2 verse 12 wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence okay so now when uh because this was speaking about when yahweh was on the scene okay everyone was in their on their best behavior but now since yahweh uh, has gone up to the heavens we got to be on even on a better um, level of behavior, so to speak, all right? 
but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, okay? Because we see and we understand what the Heavenly Father is about to do, all right? He's about to bring a lot of bloodshed, not only to our people, but to the whole world, okay? And we don't want to be on the bad side of the Heavenly Father when all hell breaks loose, all right? So from there, I want to go back to the book of Ezekiel, the 14th chapter, and touch up on pretty much working out your own salvation, all right? Because at the end of the day, you're really just, like it, like the scripture says, you're working out your own salvation, okay? It doesn't get any simpler than that, okay? Although you may give your parents a taste of the truth, at the end of the day, you did your job already, okay? You planted the seed in their head. Excuse me. And hey, you just got to let it flow in the hands of the Lord. Okay. So this is Ezekiel chapter 14. Um, matter of fact, let me start up a little, a little down. Yeah, I'll start at verse 12. Okay. Matter of fact, Salakia. Yeah. Yeah, verse 12. The word of the Most High came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Okay? And that's what's about to get ready to happen. Okay? Once again. Because why? Because our people have trespassed grievously. Okay? On a whole different level than the past, all right? Verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, which were very righteous men of the Heavenly Father, were in it, they should <clears throat> they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Most High. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it, so that it be desolate that no man may pass through because of the beast. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Most High Power, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Okay? And that's what's getting ready to happen. All right? Although you're doing the will of the Heavenly Father, you know, you're making him, you're pleasing him. That doesn't mean that the Heavenly Father is going to save your family, okay? And like I said earlier, that's that's a bitter part of this role, all right? <clears throat> Reading on, verse 17. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, Sword, go through the land so that I, can, so that I cut off men and beasts from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Most High Power, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into the land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Most High, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Okay? And that ties in with what we just read in Philippians to work out our own salvation, okay? <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that's pretty much the point I wanted right there, man. Because at the end of the day, Yahawashai told the disciples that um, he was going to set us... Uh, a matter of fact, let me get that. I believe it's in Matthews, the, f the 10th chapter. Yep. Uh, I'll start at 34, okay? Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword, okay? And matter of fact, I want to look up that word sword real quick. Okay, it goes back to the Strong's G, 3162. Um, Masharia, or let me see what how Esau pronounces it. Strong's G thirty one sixty two, Machira, Machira. 
All right, and matter of fact, let me go to the root word, Slakia. Okay, strong. We're in Strong's G thirty one sixty three now. A fight or combat of those in arms of persons at variance, disputants, etc. Strife, contention, a quarrel. Okay, and let's look up that word quarrel real quick. Copy that. Let's go to the Edamon. Okay. Damn, so lucky. Boom, right there. A dispute. A dispute. Altercation. Ground for complaint. Dispute angrily. Fall out. So on and so forth. Okay. But the main point I wanted from that word is that the Heavenly Father set up a... Damn, what's the word? Um... He pretty much detached us from our family when we came into this truth, okay? And I'll say this once again, you know, there's some brothers that have family members that have woken up to this truth, okay? And that's beautiful, okay? Because it fulfills the prophecy in Zechariah, the 13th chapter, that ch uh, children, women, and some men are going to be woken up to the truth, which are part of the one third of the nation of Israel that are going to be saved, okay? But for the majority of our family, they're gonna be set at variance, okay? They're not gonna be with what we're in tune with because at the end of the day, the Heavenly Father has set that, has set a stumbling block in their spirit, making them not to receive this word, okay? So reading on, verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foe shall be they of his own household okay so when you come into this truth you pretty much you know you pretty much made an agreement that you're not cool with your parents anymore okay because at the end of the day you really aren't all right the scriptures say to respect your parents uh, your father and your uh, mother because you know they they gave you life okay but at the end of the day you don't see them the same way the same way all right because they're not keeping the law statutes and commandments to the best of their ability and at the end of the day they're not receiving the word of the heavenly father all right okay verse 37 he that loveth father or mother slaki yeah he that loveth father father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me okay and he that taketh not his cross his afflictions the tribulations and followeth after me is not worthy of me okay verse 39 he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it okay And yeah, man, so with that, I pretty much tagged everything that I wanted to go into. And, you know, just continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, okay? For your own sake. Because at the end of the day, like the scripture says in 2nd Ezra, the 7th chapter, in the 57th verse. We'll get that real quick. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon earth shall fight, that if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. Okay? Being overcome by the things of this world, falling into those temptations, so on and so forth. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. Okay? And ultimately, that's the kingdom of heaven. All right? And, you know, yeah, man, just continue to work out your, um, matter of fact, we'll read that one, once, one more time. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, 
but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay? Because like the scripture says in 2nd Ezra, the 8th chapter, right at the first verse, it says the world to come is not made for many. Okay? Or uh, I believe it says it. Matter of fact, Slock, we'll get that real quick too. 2nd Ezra chapter 8 verse 1. And he answered me saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, but the world to come for few. Okay? So with that in mind, you just gotta... Hey man, like the scripture said, you gotta be on your best behavior. Okay? Now that Yahawashai isn't physically with us, he's spiritually with us. Okay? And he's looking at you at all times. So you just gotta be on your best behavior and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, so with that, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechah Kodash. Once again, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word. And peace and blessings go out to you, Akim, Wa Akwath, that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. Okay, and with that, a Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatham, Shalom Akim.